Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the course Management Information Systems. Today we are going to continue with the same lecture, with the same chapter, chapter 13, Investigation and Analysis from the Module 4 about Systems Development. Last lecture may, we had started off with the same chapter, chapter 13, that is Investigation and Analysis. Just we were seeing that your preliminary activities hai, of the system development were kaun kaun si hai. Just we were seeing that who are the participants of the um, system development? The system development, when an organization starts, then who are the people when you, you use the system development or when you take the system development as a project, then who are the people involved in that project or who are the people involved in the system development? We saw that there was a project manager along with the system analyst as well as the different users and stakeholders. They have the input as well, as well as different programmers and other kind of engineers that are working with the system analyst. And we said that the system analyst is basically the one who is working in the middle and he's basically the communicator, he's basically the mediator or the negotiator between all these other people that are part of the system development project or the system development cycle. Uh, we looked at the different uh, reasons for starting up the system development or uh, or the system or this information system project ke reasons kya ho kya hote hain that is that is a problem with the existing system uh, the organization needs to, uh, to look at different opportunities or the organization needs to achieve a certain kind of a competitive advantage or there are certain other external or internal factors that may trigger the uh, system development cycle. Then we looked at the information system planning and said that the basic element in the planning is that you are aligning the goals of the information system with the goals of the organization. That is, the strategic goals and the organizational goals and the organization ke, to information system goals hain, unke upar, aap unko leke aate hain, that you apply those goals to the information system goals. Agar, for example, goal hai organization ka to achieve a competitive advantage, then the information system to be developed is uh, to be developed in such a way ke uske andar kuch is tarah ke features hoon jo ke competitive advantage achieve karne ke andar help kar rahe When you specifically talk about achieving the competitive advantage, usme ek cheez aa jati hai ke do tarik hai. Uh, if the information system needs to achieve competitive advantage, that is, you look at a problem either in, in a creative manner or you try to solve the problem in a critical manner. Creative means you think out of the box, you think innovatively. Critically means that you are questioning the already made assumptions, you're questioning the already made statements, and you're also reducing the conflict between different departments that arise due to the different classes of priorities. Then we also talked about different objectives that are set for the uh, for a certain system. That means the performance objective as well as the cost objectives. And you sort of balance out these two objectives that if uh, the system needs to accomplish a certain goal, then it needs to fulfill a certain number of objectives. That is, ke performance objective means ke the extent to which the system is performing as well as the cost that is associated with its development, with its maintenance, etc. And you can evaluate karte hain to come up with a uh, good uh, project ke konsa system jo hai wo sahi kaam karega ya phir uska fayda hoga uh, organization ko. Along with that we talked about after that we talked about when once you have decided that uh, this is the system that needs to be developed and uh, these are the uh, you have planned it and this is what a goal the system is going to achieve then you're going to start off with the actual system development. Now, system development ke jo life cycles hain, wo cha ke hain. Number one was the traditional uh, life cycle, uh, system development life cycle, just mein humne paanch phases defined kiya se. That was pretty much based on the same problem solving phases. That is, you investigate, you find out the problem, uh, you analyze, that is, you figure out uh, uh, what is the solution to a certain problem different solutions of samne leke aate then is design that is you select a certain solution and design around it and figure out a plan around that certain solution how you're going to make that possible then you move on to the 
uh, implementation phase in which you act out that design or you sort of act out that solution and in the uh, maintenance phase you are basically evaluating or ensuring that the system is working as it was intended, intended to work. Iske alawa, there's another kind of uh, um, system development cycle that is prototyping that follows the same phases but in an iterative manner and it ends with a user uh, review. First, the uh, iteration is the user review pe end hoti hai, and the last one is the final iteration that is going to present the final uh, project or the final system. There are differences in uh, traditional or prototyping, mein, advantages and disadvantages. Bhi hai. Advantage of uh, traditional being that uske na documentation jo hoti hai, bahut detail mein create hoti hai. And it is a very detailed system considering all the security specifications and everything. While on the other hand, prototyping is uh, more towards development of the, um, or it's more focused on the development. That's why uske jo problems uh, aate hain, that is it uh, neglects the documentation, it neglects uh, some security issues as well as other performance issues. But on the other hand, uske the user involvement hoti hai, wo considerably good level cuper hoti hai. That means if there are any errors or there, if there are any kind of user needs that can be known at the end of the earlier iterations. And so those changes can be implemented in the next iterations. So continuing with the same uh, chapter today and continuing with the same uh, uh, system development life cycles, um, today we're going to start off with the rapid development life cycle or joint development cycle. Uh, rapid development cycle mein kya hota hai? basically it employs different tools, techniques and methodologies designed to speed the application development. Right, we said that prototyping, yes, it does speed up the uh, application, but rapid application development may are basically tools use kar rahe, kuch techniques use kar rahe, kuch methodologies use kar rahe, to, so that you are speeding up the uh, development process, the application development process, hota hai, usko, jo coding, which we call it, you speed up. Now, there are different tools, which we call RAD tools, RAD, RAD tools, bolte different companies hai, that provide these kind of RAD, RAD tools. For example, IBM has a RAD tool called the Rational Rapid Developer. Again, this is a tool to create applications in Java language. Java language, mein, jo applications create hoti hai, agar fast creation karni hai, then uh, the company can use the RAD tools as well. Iske alawa, uh, different vendors and different companies uh, that provide different kinds of RAD tools for different kinds of uh, code development. Why the rapid application development ka that it reduces uh, the paper based documentation because it's source code jo hai, wo automatically generate over and you don't have to go through the uh, a lot of paper based documentation. Some of the documentation is already being uh, simultaneously created. Then uh, it is easier uh, to adapt to the changing requirements easier. So this is the basic uh, benefit of the rapid application development is because you're using tools and methodologies. Isliye the requirements of the users ki unke upar asani se change kiya ja sakta hai. And rapid application development again is all about teamwork because you are taking input from the users and stakeholders simultaneously as well. So rapid application development, JAD as well as extreme programming again is all about the involvement of the user and the stakeholders as well. So it's me bohat zada involvement the users ki stakeholders ki without the compromising uh, any kind of uh, coding or without compromising documentation because you're using certain tools that take care of these things as well. So, when we talk about JAD, that is joint application development. Uh, uh, joint application development is basically all about the data collection as well as requirement collection. So, in that data or requirements you are collecting, but joint we are saying this because that is being happening happening in a group. When you group form, mein different people are up data collect kar hai, requirements ko analyze kar hai. so in group, mein kaun -kaun log hai? there are the problem holders as well as the solution providers. So there are people who come up with the problems, ke the system has these kind of problems or you need to do these kind of improvements and the solution providers who are saying that this might be a solution to it or this might be a solution to this problem. 
So it's all about group work along with the users and the stakeholders as well as the top management that is involved in this group process. So uh, again, the, um, the tool that is again used for the group decision making this com and that is the uh, group support systems use again why they're being used here again in this process is to reduce uh, or to suppress the negative uh, group behavior. So that means when you use the GSS, the basic uh, the benefit of using a GSS is to uh, reduce or suppress the negative group behavior. Anyway, basically, uh, joint application development, ka again, the gist of it all is that user input, stakeholder input, problem holders ki input, there's a lot of input going on and there's a lot of input coming from the users. What do the users want and their requirements? So, uh, if you look at it uh, in terms of creating an information system, so where do you think this is most uh, usable? in creating management information systems and in creating decision support systems. Why? Because uh, if you remember uh, in chapters when we were talking about uh, decision support system or management information systems ki, we said that it's basically about and also expert systems as well uh, as well as executive support systems as well that is all about that what do the decision maker want what does the executive um, uh, support system person want ke uska system usko kis tarah decision making mein help kar but these are, these are not good for the tps jad uh, jad jo hai joint application development is not good for creating uh, the tps because usme itna user involvement required nahi hota but if you remember decision support system mein uh, the creation was required hoti hai, then us bhi humne bola tha that uh, the decision maker himself is a very crucial part of creation of that decision support system because he is the one who's going to use the system and uh, the system needs to be developed in such a way that is going to help the system to make decision making easier for that, uh, him or her. So this kind of uh, rapid application development ka jo, uh, category a joint application development is very important in the creation of MIS and DSS as well as ESS. Right, the other approaches to rapid uh, development would be agile development and this uh, called dusra naam hai, extreme programming. Of extreme programming basically kya hai? Uh, again user involvement hai involved and it changes as the system is being developed. So changes can be made while the system is being developed. Now what is it? Design, ho rahe, code, ho rahe, test, ho rahe, chote -chote, uh, programs ke part, uh, there are tools to do this. Chote -chote programs ke part test ho rahe, and basically uh, programmers work in pairs. So there is one programmer and the second programmer and they are testing each other's um, codes on the smaller level as well as users can be involved here again to uh, test the code to see if uh, uh, the system is going to deliver whatever they want. So again extreme programming is entire, uh, extremely helpful to uh, again uh, encompass the changes that the users want and the changes can be applied while the development is being done. So it does not happen at the end of the implementation phase or at the end of the review phase. It can happen while the development is going on. So fayda kya hai iska the companies can build robust systems with very few errors because uh, unka jo error rate hai because the small modules are being tested over and over again or wo saath saath test ho rahe and that is ki unka jo error rate hai wo bhoot reduce ho, ho jata hai is tarah. Right, next we have the end user system development cycle. End user system development mein basically kya hai? That's a system development project in which business managers and users assume the primary effort. So, it's basically uh, being done by the managers and the users themselves. Ke wohi log jo hai, unko motivation mil rhi hai, information system personal se, ke wo uh, development ka kaam bhi thoda bhoot khud kaya rhi hai. Right? But the, the disadvantage of the doing this end user system development is that some end users do not have the training to effectively develop and test the system. 
But there, there can be information system people or there can be software engineers that can be uh, uh, sort of assisting these people to do the job. So again, for example, if you're creating a DSS or you're creating an um, executive support system or you're creating an expert system again, just may humne bola tha that uh, expert system may be there are tools that uh, are available to create the system them themselves by the experts themselves. So only ye hota hai ke jo IS personnel hote hain, jo information system ke engineers hote hain, they can help the managers and the users develop the system themselves by, again, by the help of different kinds of tools and techniques. Again, ek to disadvantage iska ye ho sakta hai ke end users do not have the training, proper training to effectively develop uh, and test the system, so that means error ke chances zada hai. Those are disadvantages here, Sikta, that uh, the end user is spending time in creating the systems that are already available and they're not aware of it. So, so they're spending the resources in creating the systems that are already available. That's why it's again very important to do a proper planning before and proper training before uh, the managers and users can start uh, sort of developing the, tool, uh, developing the system themselves with the help of, even though if they're doing with the help of different tools. Alright, now that we have talked about the different kinds of life cycles, we have talked about traditional, ki baat ki thi, prototyping, ki baat ki thi, RAD, ki baat ki thi, as well as end user. So, in char uh, uh, life cycles, ki baat, uh, ki humne, but then uh, the main, main question that the company asks uh, itself is that either they are going to do this um, development themselves, ya jo bhi programming hai, wo wo khud karenge, ya phir, no system uh, development they have kisi or ko denge or do they have uh, a kind of a system analyst or do they have the information system engineers to perform the whole system development cycle themselves or not right so this is the question that the companies ask so usme ek major cheez aa jati hai that is outsourcing and on demand computing isme kya hota hai they again outsourcing ka concept humne pehle bhi padha tha that they basically give a certain uh, mm, for example, information system creation module to some other company so that some other company does that work for them and they give the uh, product to them in the end. So, the reasons why the companies use uh, outsourcing and on demand computing is number one, they want to reduce costs, they don't want to hire people uh, in their own uh, facility to uh, do this information system development job or they want to obtain state of the art technology. Why? Because they do not have enough um, human resource available to do this or the uh, expertise to do this and they want to eliminate staffing and personal problems again. Again, they, they cannot hire people, they cannot uh, train people for this kind of work. Again, that costs a lot and increase technological flexibility. Again, that is uh, based on their lack of ability to do the things themselves. And along with that, there are basically different companies that uh, provide these kind of services or kind of these outsourcing services, especially for the information system development. For example, there's electronic data systems by IBM, EDS, and Accenture, that is again a very uh, known outsourcing and a consultancy company that provides consultancy as well as uh, information system development for other companies. The different uh, reasons why outsourcing and on-demand computing uh, happens uh, for different companies. Number one reason is that when a company believes uh, it can cut costs. So that means that uh, if a company has uh, costs uh, cut or uh, then they can outsource it to some other company that is in a relatively less pay area. For example, they, um, if there's a company in UK, they can outsource the information development to Pakistan because Pakistan may come come person as compared to being done in the UK. Right. Next point is when a firm has limited opportunity to distinguish itself completely through a particular information system operation or application. Again, uh, that means that it does not have uh, the opportunity to distinguish itself. Apne aapko stand out nahi kar sakti. Uh, competitively through a particular information system operation or application. 
For example, Kodak outsourced its uh, information system operations, including mainframe processing, telecommunications, personal computer support, because it had limited opportunity to do this. And Kodak kept application development and support in-house because it thought that these activities had competitive value. Also, because these activities had competitive value, وہ انہوں نے اپنے پاس رکھی ہیں اور وہ والی چیزیں جن میں وہ فیل کر رہے تھے کہ they cannot achieve a certain level of competition in these kind of activities یا tasks تو وہ والے task انہوں نے outsource کر دیا so when outsourcing does not strip the company of technical know-how required for future information system innovation so firms must ensure that information staff remains technically up to date and have expertise to develop future application. Outsource ka ye bhi matlab nahi hai ki aap apne company ke jo technical know-how hai usko completely khatam kar dein. So it's very important that the companies maintain their know-how as well. When a company's existing information capabilities are limited, ineffective and technically inferior. Again the same point that I told before that if the company is feeling inferior uh, in terms of the technical capabilities, then it can uh, outsource to help it make the transition from a centralized mainframe environment to a distributed client-server environment, for example. Or when a firm is downsizing. For example, downsizing means that they are cutting people, they are uh, uh, firing people, and they are not hiring more people, so that is called downsizing. Again, it's very important, outsourcing is a very important factor that you have to critical uh, mission critical uh, tasks and mission critical business processes and outsource not outsource. For example, if you have a, um, if you have a uh, e-commerce site or e-commerce site, if you have shopping cards, you outsource outsource. Then again, that is the cru uh, crucial part of the uh, system and you cannot outsource that. Why? Because that is going to... Uh, uh, give you revenues that is going to give you the competitive advantage. Right, next we move on to different factors affecting the system development success. Okay, this thing we will go into detail because we have factors that we have talked about. Two things are that are both of them are related with the project management that we talked about before is that change that is number one degree of change means what is the scope of the change Chota change are because you are changing one uh, module of a certain existing system or you're changing, changing the entire system. So again, depending on uh, what is happening with the system, it depends upon the degree of change. Continuous improvement versus engineering means that uh, if it's continuous improvement, that means it's the gradual change. While if you're moving towards re-engineering, that means it's a huge change all of the sudden and requires a lot of planning. So depending on the kind of uh, system development uh, happening or the kind of uh, project uh, happening in the organization, change ko si tarah manage karna hai. Again, managing change ki baat bhi humne uh, uh, last and last wale lecture mein kar di thi that there are different ways of managing change and again the system uh, analyst is the change uh, agent who is responsible for doing so. And when we talk about, and then we talked about the quality and standards. Just we have talked about that you have any project ke jo failure ke reasons hai, wo kaun -kaun se hai. We talked about these in the project management as well. Right? Ji. Next three uh, topics hai, that are again related with the project management, ki project management tools. Again, what kind of tools are being used? Either you're using PERD, Gantt chart, again, uh, that. Uh, uh, depends on the kind of project that is being done and you use the tools use kar rahe then you use the case tools that is the computer aided software engineering tools this uh, may a tool a jata hai, rational rows a jata hai, a jata hai, oracle developer a jata hai. what kind of these tools are being used oracle designer a jata hai. what kind of tools are being used to um, uh, sort of help the programmers do their job as well as the object oriented system development that means there are two kinds of uh, uh, development processes either you are following uh, the uh, structured approach or you are following the object oriented approach this could be a market ke dekh lenge, investigation or analysis mein. so again these all just uh, become a part of the variety of factors that are affecting the development are, uh, that are affecting the success of the development uh, systems development uh, project.
So now we're going to uh, officially start talking about the different phases of the uh, in, uh, system development uh, cycle. This is the first phase that is system investigation. Again, what is the purpose of doing so is to figure out the problem. What are the potential problems and what are the p potential opportunities to improve a certain system or to uh, sort of move towards creating a new system. Right, ji. Questions kis kis ke aate hai, uh, in this phase is number one, the primary problems might a new or enhanced system solve? That is, kaun kaun si problems hai in the existing system that can be solved by the new system? What opportunities might a new or enhanced system provide? What are the new opportunities that the system is going to provide? What are the new hardware, software, database, telecommunication, personal? or procedure will improve an existing system or are required in a new system. That is, ek to amin decide kar liya ke problems kaun se solve karega, opportunities kaun si leke aega, as well as uh, uske, usse related jo hardware, software, telecommunication, database requirements hai, wo kaun kaun si hai. And what are the potential costs, the variable costs as well as the fixed costs associated with the new uh, approach and what are the associated risks as well. So these are all questions that uh, become a part of the initial investigation or systems investigation in the beginning. Once you have the project, you initiate the project, you have the um, uh, initiation that, uh, uh, or the go sign that, okay, fine, if this is the um, uh, project that you need to work on, then you start the investigation about that project, that this is the problem and the system is going to be solving this problem or the system is going to be uh, giving you these kind of opportunities and sort of a assumed uh, analysis of um, these are the hardware database will be required for this system, etc, etc. So in the end, you are creating a sort of a report that, going, that is going to uh, be the basis of starting off with the analysis of the uh, project. Right, so initiating the system uh, investigation is you are uh, basically a system request form is being filled by someone who wants the information uh, system department to initiate the system investigation. Investigation shuru karne se pehle ek form hota hai jo ke jo bhi banda hai from uh, like I said the information system is initiated from any part of the organization, any level of the organization. So that person is basically filling out the form and uh, wants the information department to start working on the system investigation. Uh, information included in that form is problems, opportunities again, objectives of the system investigation, what is the system investigation going to achieve, overview of the proposed system and expected costs and benefits of the proposed system. Right, Ji. Now that uh, that form is being submitted, then afterwards the information system uh, department is going to work on the investigation of that uh, proposed system which these are the problems and this is what the new system uh, is going to do. For example, participants in the investigation are pretty much uh, the same joke we have defined when we were defining uh, the participants of the system development. So that includes the upper and the mi middle management uh, managers as well as the project management uh, manager as well as the uh, IS personnel, just my system analyst PRA, as well as the users and stakeholders. So information system personnel includes different people in the information system department or the engineers as well as the system analyst. Right, now the actual system investigation when it takes place then it's all about uh, the feasibility. Feasibility means uh, whether the project needs to be, it will be feasible, will be beneficial for the organization or not. There are uh, pros and cons, kya, uske drawbacks, kya, etc, etc. Right, feasibility basically uh, assesses the technical, economic, legal, operational as well as the schedule of the uh, certain project or jo bhi, uh, problem scenario unke saamne pesh kiya gaya or the proposed uh, solution jo pesh kiya gaya. 
The number one is the technical. That is concerned with whether the hardware, software, and other system components can be acquired or developed to solve the problem. Either the, sy uh, the system that has been proposed, uske jo hardware, so software, or different technical requirements hain, wo uh, acquire ki ja sakti hain, uh, ya phir develop ki ja sakti hain to solve a certain problem or not. Right, ji. next is the economic feasibility. Then again, that has to do with the a financial sense that agar ye uh, uh, jo cost is mentioned ki gayi hai us proposed system mein ya system request form mein either they are uh, they make some financial sense or not and the benefits of the uh, system are sort of greater than the cost that go in its making so it basically evaluates the different uh, costs involved so net uh, present value here is an approach for ranking uh, the competing projects. So net present value, just uh, just on a project management, maybe they cut up. There were different methods of uh, selecting the projects, right? So this pretty much is following the same idea of selecting the projects. That if you have a number of projects on the table again, then which project needs uh, to go into the analysis phase? Pele phase me planning me. Aapka uh, investigation ke andar project aa gaya. Investigation mein again checking hogi that uh, yahaan pe project aa to gaya hai. Then should we continue with the project or not? So that's why this net uh, present value ya rank uh, uh, karna zaruri hota hai projects ko depending upon the different factors especially the uh, cost factor jo ke bahut important hota hai. Then next uh, point of concern is the legal feasibility that means whether the laws and regulations can prevent a certain project from taking place either currently or in the future so they have to be legally aware uh, in the fact that if they are creating a certain website for example that is going to illegally provide uh, music or uh, any other kind of digital content to unke upar aage ja ke koi lawsuit na create ho raha ho ya unke upar koi privacy act na uh, laga de unko koi sue na kar de so they have to be legally aware of these kind of projects as well ya ye na ho ke aage chal ke wo wali jo website hai wo ban kara di jaye right the operational feasibility means that whether uh, it can be put into action or it can be put into operation or not uh, which means that some of the important factors are that is the motivational uh, consideration that means the uh, again, it has to do with the ch uh, change that is involved. That is, either the people are going to accept it, ya phir kitna kuch ch uh, chance hai that people are going to resist it, and kitna chance hai that we can do a proper change management to implement the system. Either the system is going to be, uh, will be able to work for the people or not. Then the next is schedule feasibility. Schedule feasibility is either the um, system ya jo bhi project hai wo itna lamba nahi ho raha ke that is going to go out of scope of the project time jo usually wo allot karte hain or it is a kind of a project that can be completed in a certain amount of time ya phir wo is kisam ka project hai that is going to take a lot of time so that they can be uh, pre, uh, uh, prepared for uh, any such kind of project that is going to take a lot of time to be developed. So basically, uh, um, system request form to koi bhi fill kar deta and they do their own kind of analysis according to their own understanding that the system uh, can solve the problem uh, and the system is going to do uh, this kind of uh, uh, problem solving or the system is going to give this kind of opportunity. But in the investigation phase, different uh, levels ke upar wo wala jo project hai wo sort of an, uh, analyze hota hai ya investigate hota hai ki either it's feasible to do it either in terms of technical uh, facts or in terms of operational or in terms of schedule that either it's going to be feasible for the company or it's going to be beneficial for the company or not right so after all the feasibility has been taken place ya jo investigation hai ye ho jati hai ki jo project hai wo uh, is ka hoga aur uski jo, uh, feasibility hai, wo ye hai. So that is all documented in the form of a feasibility report which systems investigation report. Kehte hai. Basically it summarizes the results of the systems investigation and recommends a certain course of action. That means either you continue with the project 
modify it or you drop it and basically the report is reviewed again by the steering committee which is um, it consisted of the top management people involved as well as different other managers and users so that they uh, collectively decide that if there is a certain project and uh, while viewing at the different feasibility report they decide if the project uh, can go into the analysis phase or uh, they need to go back and evaluate the problems again or they need to uh, simply drop the project because it is not feasible or it's too costly for the company and they see that it's not going to create benefits for the company. Right, afterwards, when they have finally decided that the project is feasible and they accept uh, in a way that uh, the proposed system is going to do this, then comes the question that what must the information system do to solve the problem. Fine, they said that uh, if the uh, proposed uh, system should do this, then they are going to look at different alternatives that what must the information system do to solve the problem. And that's not all. If the company is that this project um, uh, has its feasibility report and it can be done then they start with the analysis phase. Analysis phase not only looks at the different solutions to the problem, but it goes deeper down in the problem as well. General considerations of this uh, phase is that, number one, the sort of go back to the goals of the organization. Who goals clarify? again. They assemble the participants of the system analysis, and then they also go back into the problem means that they go back into the data collection and the requirement analysis as well. That is, the requirements and users ki, jo bhi needs and users ki, ya jo bhi problem hai, wo usko dobara dekhenge. Then they're going to analyze the data and the requirements. Not only collect the data and the requirements in detail, but they're going to analyze the data and requirements and prepare a report on the existing system, the strengths and weaknesses of the existing system, the requirements of the new system, and the different project priorities. So that means they basically not only look at the what was lacking in the previous information system or the previous system, Joby Kamkara, and what is the basic requirement of the uh, uh, information system, that is what will the new system be doing as well as the different project priorities that are associated with it. And for this the evaluation uh, is not only about the problem that is being happening because they need to go back to the actual problem as well. So for that they go back not only uh, looking into that's why they not only look into the entire system but they also look into the business process as well. So that if they're saying that if there's a certain problem that is happening, maybe the, the problem is happening at the business process level. Maybe, maybe the business process is not being handled in a proper way, and that's why they, uh, the, the people are saying that there's a problem with the system. So maybe there's not a problem with the system, and there's a problem with the business process as well, so that they can figure out the actual problem that is behind a certain problem. So again, it not only gathers the data, on existing system, it determines the requirement of the new system, considers alternatives within the constraints as well as investigates the feasibility of the different solutions as well. So this phase is all about uh, looking at different solutions and looking at the different alternatives that are available to solve a certain problem. Right, the participants of this uh, phase again, the original development team and the team develops uh, when they have uh, the same development team. So, uh, objectives and teams in this uh, analysis phase is they're listing the objectives and activities of the certain different tasks. They are uh, defining the deadlines that if this is a certain task that needs to be done, this is the objective of the task, this is the deadline of the task. The statement of the resources that are required to accomplish certain tasks as well as the major milestones that are going to achieved in a certain period of time. So these are the different things that are decided by the project team in uh, 
when basically आपका जो project है वो शुरू हो जाता है that is in the system analysis after the investigation. और जी system analysis right so far we have described that system analysis में होता क्या क्या है what is the purpose of system analysis and who are the people involved in the system analysis and what is their task. That is उनका first जो decisions होते हैं वो क्या होते हैं that is about different task उनके milestones deadlines etc etc. Then the second step of the system analysis is that one once the analysis starts the the very priority basis is the data collection. Data collection means कि जो भी requirements है जो भी data है that is required to start the analysis about the existing system वो शुरू होता है. That means they are identifying the sources of data. Now the sources of data can be internal as well as external. Internal means that your users, stakeholders as well as organizational charts, forms and documents, financial reports, information system manuals. These are the places where they can uh, find the internal data. External sources of data could be the customers, could be the suppliers, government agencies, the competitors, journals, um, any any kind of uh, source that is helpful in uh, giving any kind of input about the existing system from the external uh, sources. So, data collection happens from inside the organization as well as outside the operation. Now, data collection ke different tariqe hai. Number one is structured interview and unstructured interview. So, interview basically kya hota hai? Face to face uh, way of talking hoti hai. Just mein aap questions put shi hote and the person is answering the questions. So, structured interview means that there are certain predefined questions that are already written and the person is simply asking those questions. Unstructured interview means that the person has the experience, the person who is asking the questions has the experience and he is asking questions uh, at run time from the person based on experience and noting down the answers from the users. Right, so interview ke do types hai. Uh, third is the direct observation. Direct observation means the system uh, uh, analyst hai, ya jo bhi analysis ka personal hai. He sits with the users uh, uh, throughout whatever they're working on and they sort of observe whatever the system is doing. So either they take a day or two yeah, throughout the working hours of the user, they look at the system and they analyze that what is working adequately and what is working inadequately so that they can do the analysis later on and they get the data while looking at the system themselves. So the important factor in direct observation is that the person should have the skills of actually looking at the uh, process unbiased so that they're not affected by the feelings or attitudes of the people and they have the ability to look at the things uh, very clearly that what is happening. Right, next is questionnaires. Questionnaires, again, they can be structured and unstructured. That is, uh, the questions can be, uh, questionnaires, again, uh, can be sent to people if the data sources are dispersed. Or for example, they are in different uh, geographical locations. So, usme questionnaires send kiya jate hain, ko, wo uske answers dete hain. Also, these questionnaires can have follow-up questions because if the an uh, analysts want to be clear about certain situation, they can do questionnaires, they can ask a question on the certain answer they have received. Then, iske alawa, there is another uh, category that is called statistical sampling. Again, this is uh, about uh, data collection. This may, for example, there is 10,000 sales order ka data unko analyze karna hai. So, instead of taking 10,000, they take around 100 or 200 um, ka sample leke or uski par analysis karke assume karenge that if they have done it on 200 then that means that applies on uh, approximately applies on the 10,000 as well. So they take the, the apply the statistical sampling on a certain amount of data because analyzing 10,000 sales order would be time consuming and again a very lengthy process. Arjee, next uh, is the actual uh, system analysis may as a phase data analysis ka once the data has been collected again uh, we're calling it data because it's in raw form, right? See, once you have the data, then you are manipulating the collected data so that it can be used, so that it could be, could, uh, be meaningful and could be understandable by the analyst. So there are different tools and techniques that are for data, data analysis that are used. 
جس میں نمبر ون ٹیکنیک اس دیٹا موڈلنگ این اپلیکیشن فلو چارٹ گریڈ چارٹ ایز ویل ایس اپلیکیشن موڈلنگ ڈیٹا موڈلنگ اگین ایف یو ممبر اگین وی ہیو ڈن دس بیفور ایز ویل ود ہیلپ آف ای آر ڈائیگرام جب ہم نے ڈیٹا بیسز بھی پڑھے تھے دین وی آلسو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ڈیٹا موڈلنگ دیٹ از اپروچ ٹو موڈلنگ آرگنائزیشن آبجیکٹس اینڈ ایسوسیشن سو دیر سرٹن اینٹیٹیز ان دا آرگنائزیشن اینڈ دیز اینٹیٹیز ہیو اے سرٹن ریلیشن شپ سو دیز دا ریلیشن شپ بٹوین دا اینٹیٹیز اینڈ آبجیکٹس آر ڈیفائنڈ ود ہیلپ آف دا ای آر ڈائیگرام so once you have the data that okay this is the entity these are relationships so these are again uh, implemented in the graphical form and once something comes in the graphical form aapke samne ek image create ho jata hai kisi cheez ka then it again easier to understand that how a system is working and what is the relationship between different objects or the entities that are part of the system next is the application flow charts That means application flowcharts are basically showing relationship among different kinds of applications or the systems. So there are different systems working in a big system and there are different applications also working in a mm, huge system. So own applications ka jo relationship create ho raha hai, jo unka input output uh, flow hai, wo kis tera ban raha hai, that is again shown with the help of application uh, flowcharts. For example, uh, clear the relationships among the آڈر پروسیسنگ فنکشن فار ایگزامپل آپ کے پاس ایک فنکشن ہے آڈر پروسیسنگ فنکشن اس کے اندر جو ڈفرینٹ فیکٹرز ہیں یا ڈفرینٹ ایلیمنٹس ہیں ان کے اندر کس قسم کا ریلیشن شپ کریٹ ہو رہا ہے وہ آپ اپلیکیشن فلو چارٹس یا سمپل فلو چارٹس ان کو کہتے ہیں اس سے شو کر سکتے ہیں دین دیر گریڈ چارٹس اویلیبل گریڈ چارٹ اگین لائک دا نیم سجیسٹ اٹس اے گریڈ آگے چل کے اس کا امیج دیکھتے ہیں that it's basically a table that shows relationship among different aspects of the system development. Right? See, for example, a chart shows that various applications are using different kinds of databases. So these are the different applications and these are different databases or which application is the database used. So as you can see here, here the first image is of the uh, uh, flow chart that means اس کے اندر different uh, types کے آپ کے um, boxes ہوتے ہیں یا ovals ہوتے ہیں that define کہ آپ کا for example this, uh, the oval means that a certain process is being started uh, rectangle means that this is a certain uh, process uh, that is being uh, that is happening this is a process uh, this um, and this shape means that it is a decision here That means the requirements uh, are met. No, move on to this kind of process. Yes, move on to another kind of process. So, uh, flowchart basically defines that your system is uh, flow ho hai, uh, application ke jo relationship is what kind of process is process is connected with the other process or what point of decision is etc. etc. So, this is all defined in a flowchart. اس کے علاوہ دس ہیئر از دیٹ گریڈ چارٹ جس میں ڈفرینٹ اس سائڈ کے اوپر اپلیکیشنز ہیں اور اس کائڈ کے سائڈ کے اوپر ڈیٹا بیسز ہیں دیٹ مینس دیٹ آڈر پروسیسنگ اپلیکیشن از یوزنگ دا کسٹمر ڈیٹا بیس ایز ویل ایز دا انوینٹری ڈیٹا بیس سو اگین اٹ از شوئنگ یو دا ریلیشن شپ بٹوین ڈفرینٹ اپلیکیشن اینڈ ڈفرینٹ ڈیٹا بیسز اسی طرح کے گریڈ چارٹ اور ڈفرینٹ چیزوں کے لیے بھی کریٹ کیا جا سکتے ہیں سو دیٹ پیپل کین بٹ انڈرسٹینڈ واٹ از گوئنگ آن in the system or if they are creating solutions that then what will be going on in the uh, alternate solutions as well right the activity modeling again is a very important part of the analysis is done through the use of data flow diagrams in kuham dft diagrams bolte these basically model objects associations and activities by describing how data can flow between and around different kind of objects. So DFD or data flow diagram basically describes the activities that accomplish a business task. Just may different again symbols use or there is may data flow symbol, hai, process symbol, hai, entity symbol, hai, data store ka symbol hai, that means uh, database concept as well as it has symbols of different actors as well. So basically it Uh, all uh, defines the activity that that is going on between the different entities or the different objects uh, in the system so for example on one side if you have the entity relation diagram and on the other side you have the dft diagram then uh, it sort of gives a top down approach so 
uh, on the higher level you have the entity relation uh, diagram jo ki aapko sirf relationship bata rahi hai entities ke darmiyan but uska top down approach would be this activity modeling mein dft diagram that is going to describe the different activities and what activity comes first in uh, between two entities right so this is basically uh, is going to define what is happening between the two activities and their associations between two entities as well as their association and the activities that are happening between the entities and also where the data is moving uh, from one uh, entity to, to another and how is it being stored in the any kind of data store jo bhi uska storage location hai right ji once uh, uh, they have created the flow charts they have created the uh, sort of uh, activity modeling charts as well as the dfd diagrams of the existing systems then they move on towards what are the requirements of the um, uh, uh, users or what are the requirements of the stakeholders that they need to change the system so they again follow the same procedures for um, the modeling techniques again for the existing systems as well राइट जी और जिसको हम डिजाइन फेज में जाके देखेंगे कि डिजाइन में जाके जब रिक्वायरमेंट एनालिसिस आ जाते हैं उनके एक्सिस्टिंग सिस्टम्स के अंदर फ्लोर चार्टिंग सब कुछ आ जाती है देन हाउ आर दे गोइंग टू सिलेक्ट अ डिजाइन फॉर द न्यू सिस्टम राइट जी इसमें रिक्वायरमेंट एनालिसिस में बेसिकली इसका पर्पज क्या है टू डिटर्मिन द यूजर स्टेक होल्डर एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नीड्स राइट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के क्या नीड्स हैं स्टेक होल्डर के क्या नीड्स हैं एज वेल एज यूजर वट इज वट डू दे वॉन्ट फ्रॉम द सिस्टम एंड दे कैप्चर द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ द पीपल इन डिटेल एज वेल नंबर वन वे ऑफ डूइंग इज आस्किंग डायरेक्टली वेरी सिंपल इज दैट इट वर्क बेस्ट फॉर स्टेबल सिस्टम इन विच यूजर अंडरस्टैंड द सिस्टम फंक्शन सो दे सिंपली आस्क डायरेक्टली दैट वट यू वॉन्ट फ्रॉम द सिस्टम टू डू एंड इफ इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल सिस्टम दैन द पीपल कैन टेल एग्जैक्टली वट दे वॉन्ट फ्रॉम द सिस्टम or it can happen through the help of uh, the critical success factors that is the managers make a list of factors that are critical to success of their field so that the um, the requirement would be that the uh, information system that is to be developed is going to uh, achieve those uh, critical success factors that the managers have uh, created the next uh, point is the information system plan that is uh when we talked about the information system plan four is that that is translating the strategic and organization goals into the needs of the or the system development initiative just ko humne pehle bola tha so wo ek requirement ban jati hai uh, uh ek system ki so these are the different ways of how the system uh, these uh, uh analysts are going to figure out what are the requirements of the system ke usne achieve kya karna hai or there could be object oriented system analysis means that you are applying the object oriented approach is used to identify the problems and show relationships by showing objects as classes so object oriented approach mein aap different ek object hota hai jiske aap different classes create karte hain instances create karte hain so that you are able to show that what are the problems and what can be the solutions of the system so in the end uh, we will have the system analysis report a system analysis report again uh, in the end of each phase there is a report that documents everything that has been done in the uh, that process or in that phase kya karta hai strengths or weaknesses of existing system uh, report karta hai from the stakeholders point, uh, perspective then it lists down the user and stakeholder requirements of the new system and then it also lists down the uh, organizational requirement for the new system as well as description of what new information system should do to solve the problem that means they are going to give a solution that the system uh, information system is going to do this to solve a certain kind of a problem so then again this support is again given to the steering co committee for analysis or for review that uh, this is what we have uh, analyzed by looking at the system this is how the system is working these are the activities that are working in the system this is the information flow in the system these are the relationship between the entities of the dis different systems these are the requirements of the people these are the requirements of the organization and considering the different problems the information system needs to do this 
So they basically answered the what here. And afterwards, when they have said, uh, uh, described that, or uh, answered the question of what the information system is going to do, they are going to move on towards the design phase that is going to figure out how the information system is going to solve the problem. Again, this what the information system needs to do can be uh, uh, sort of uh, implemented in the graphical form again by the help of these entity relationship diagrams as well as the flow charting as well um, as well as in the textual form as well. So then when this uh, report is given, uh, given to the steering committee, they decide either uh, the analysis needs to be done again or it should continue into the design phase or not. Or Joby uh, solutions either uh, the team needs to work on these solutions or not or or the different solutions that are given either they're feasible or not again yahan pe bhi on different solutions ki feasibility check ki jati hai first step mein project ki feasibility check ki gayi thi ke either the project the whole project is going to be beneficial or not yahan pe different uh, solutions ki feasibility check ki jati hai right so in uh, in this chapter 13 that we were talking about the investigation and analysis We've come uh, to an end of this uh, chapter. We have seen the uh, different kinds of preliminary activities that are important for the system development as well as the investigation and analysis phase, phases that are crucial part of the system development life cycle. We said the effective system development requires team effort as well as careful planning of the information systems. Again, without team, without support of the information systems, like we said uh, in the project management as well, okay, if uh, top management support ni hogi, if proper planning ni hogi, if the information system goals are not aligned with the corporate goals, then the uh, purpose of the uh, creating the information system basically dies. Then the system development often uses different kinds of tools to select and analyze project requirements. Again, kis kisim ka project hai, either the project is feasible or not, there are different tools, different techniques that are used to analyze and rank the different projects. Outsourcing also is an option for companies that uh, either want to reduce costs or they are downsizing or they do not have enough capability to do the IS projects themselves. Then when you talk about the investigation basically concerns with the feasibility at different levels. That means it, uh, if you have a certain project then either it's feasible technically, uh, operationally, schedule, either the schedule can be feasible or it can be feasible, feasible economically or not, so there are different factors involved in actually selecting a project for further work. Then when we talk about the analysis, the analysis is concerned with basically collecting and analyzing the data and the requirements. So when we talk about collecting the data, we talk about looking deeper into the existing system, looking deeper into the weaknesses as well as strengths of the system. Why? Look at, and also looking deeper into the problem behind the problem as well. So the analysis basically let, let, uh, lists down the uh, what is the existing system doing, what are the problems with it, what are the strengths of the existing system that do not need to change, the requirements of the users, requirements of the organization, as well as different solutions, their feasibility, and what is uh, the information system and going to solve and what is the information system basically going to do to solve the certain problem. So this is where we end our chapter. In the next chapter we're going to talk about the design and implementation that is uh, after uh, a product has been finalized in this phase, analysis be okay and the analysis has been uh, reviewed by the steering committee and it has been um, decided that you need to continue, then they move on to the design and implementation phase. So this is all for today. We're going to meet in the next lecture. Thank you very much.